Heath Ledger's untimely death sparked all kinds of rumors that transformed the actor's performance as a Joker in The Dark Knight into the stuff of legend. What's the truth about the many ways he threw himself fearlessly into one of the most iconic roles in modern cinema? Heath Ledger had a long history of sleep troubles, reportedly struggling with a racing mind for years before portraying the Joker. However, his chronic insomnia became much more prevalent and aggressive after filming The Dark Knight. His difficulty sleeping was summed up in a New York Times profile in 2007, while the film was in production. It is a physically and mentally draining role. His Joker is a psychopathic, mass-murdering, schizophrenic clown with zero empathy. He said cheerfully, and as often happens when he throws himself into a part, he is not sleeping much. During this interview, Ledger reported that he had slept an average of two hours per day over the previous week. He even mentioned taking one Ambien to no effect, and after taking another, he was only able to stay asleep for an hour. This interview, which took place several months before Ledger's death, shed light onto how sleep deprivation changed the young actor. And an offhand remark about his resistance to sleeping medications even eerily foreshadowed his imminent fatal overdose on prescription drugs. Although director Christopher Nolan gave Heath Ledger quite a bit of creative control over his version of the Joker, he did suggest several sources of inspiration. These recommendations included the paintings of Francis Bacon, the Anthony Burgess novel A Clockwork Orange, and heavy metal music. Nolan suggested these so that Ledger could understand the type of Joker he was envisioning for the film, and several of these inspirations helped to form the final version that appeared on screen. I thought my jokes were bad. One of the characters from A Clockwork Orange, Alex DeLarge, was particularly influential on Ledger's development of his Joker character. Several images of DeLarge appear throughout the legendary Joker diary that the actor created during his self-imposed isolation in order to get into the right headscape for the character. Since Alex DeLarge is depicted as a sociopath who steals and assaults innocent people purely for his own amusement in A Clockwork Orange, it is only natural that the Joker would consider him to be a kindred spirit. In fact, the Joker's iconic glare in The Dark Knight is considered to be a recreation of the famed Kubrick stare, the expression that Delage, played by Malcolm McDowell, used in the film version of A Clockwork Orange. Since Heath Ledger wanted his depiction of the Joker to be completely different from any previous versions, such as those played by Jack Nicholson or Cesar Romero, he isolated himself in a London hotel for around six weeks to cultivate an entirely new character. During a 2007 interview with Empire, Ledger briefly went over how his experience preparing for the role changed him, saying, I sat around in a hotel room in London for about a month, locked myself away, formed a little diary and experimented with voices. Seeing as some of the Joker's most iconic features are his mocking voice and sardonic laugh, Ledger wanted to make sure his Joker's voice set him apart from those who had played the part before. This was no small feat, as aside from the greats who had played the Joker on screen, Mark Hamill had made his vocal mark on the character in animation. Hello Gotham, Joker's back in town! In order to formulate his own unique voice for the Joker, Ledger practiced different pitches and tones. He wanted to be sure that the voice he chose reflected the personality of the character he was envisioning, saying, It was important to try to find a somewhat iconic voice and laugh. I ended up landing more in the realm of a psychopath, someone with very little to no conscience towards his acts. According to Nolan, Ledger had been studying ventriloquist dummies because he found their voices terrifying. He decided to try and emulate one, and using the training on inflections he had received from a voice coach, managed to mouth his dialogue to create an eerie sound effect. I don't, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Although not all actors are deeply concerned with the costumes or props their character uses, the Dark Knight prosthetic supervisor Connor O'Sullivan said Heath Ledger became heavily involved with the painting on his face. Apparently, Ledger and makeup artist John Caglione Jr. gravitated toward a Francis Bacon painting that Nolan had recommended as inspiration for the Joker's makeup. Nolan went into more detail about how the makeup design helped flesh out Ledger's Joker character, saying, We have a Francis Bacon spin to his face. This corruption, this decay in the texture of the look itself. It's grubby. You can almost imagine what he smells like. Besides working with Caglioni on makeup design, Ledger was also very engaged in the wardrobe and prop departments. He worked closely with the Dark Knight costume designer Lindy Hemming when choosing the right chaotic outfit for the character. He even chose the Joker's signature weapon from a selection of different rubber knives laid out by the prop team. In the German documentary Heath Ledger Too Young to Die, Ledger's father went into more detail on just how much his son changed to prepare for the Dark Knight, explaining that galvanizing a character was, quote, typical of Heath. Although Ledger was a seasoned method actor who had already sunk his teeth into challenging roles, he pushed himself even further than ever when getting into character for the Joker. After Ledger's untimely death, rumors ran rampant that his turn as a Joker had taken a toll on the young actor and led to his demise. However, a documentary titled I Am Heath 
Ledger, created by the actor's friends and family and released in 2017, dispels the theories about his death. During an interview with Entertainment Weekly following a screening of the documentary at the Tribeca Film Festival, the deceased actor's sister, Kate Ledger, officially set the record straight about his state of mind before his death, saying, He was having fun. He wasn't depressed about the Joker. Although Heath Ledger was incredibly successful in his portrayal of the Joker, he was initially very skeptical of superhero films. In fact, when Nolan began casting for The Dark Knight's predecessor, Batman Begins, he originally contacted Ledger about playing the titular character. Burt was turned down with the note that he would, quote, never do this kind of film. Despite his lack of interest in comic book movies, Ledger quickly changed his tune after watching Batman Begins. He appreciated the realism that Nolan brought to the table so much that he enthusiastically reached out about playing the Joker in the sequel before the screenplay was even finished. And so I was sort of surprised to get the call because it really more came from his end uh, about wanting to get involved, wanting to talk to me about what we would be doing. While he was preparing for the role, Ledger embraced his nerdy side and read several graphic novels that Nolan recommended, including Alan Moore and Brian Boland's iconic The Killing Joke. After his isolation, Ledger described his process of utilizing these comics to help him get into character, saying, It's a combination of reading all the comic books I could that were relevant to the script and then just closing my eyes and meditating on it. In The Dark Knight, the Joker makes two broadcasts threatening the people of Gotham City and taunting Batman. Although Nolan supervised the filming process, he granted Ledger complete creative control over these hostage videos, as he wanted to be sure they were taken from the Joker's perspective. Originally, Nolan was only planning on having the actor direct the first video, but he was so impressed by the result that he changed his mind, giving Ledger the opportunity to direct the second too. Ledger had already expressed interest in trying his hand at directing, and this was his first real chance to branch out into a new artistic endeavor. Before his death, Ledger had already begun directing several music videos, such as Grace Woodruff's David Bowie cover Quicksand and Modest Mouse's King Rat. He was also in the process of adapting the 1983 novel The Queen's Gambit into a feature-length film, but his untimely death sadly stopped him from finishing the project. Heath Ledger didn't just push himself mentally to get into character for the Joker, he also pushed himself physically. The actor was so dedicated to the role that he actually encouraged Christian Bale to physically assault him in order to make one scene more authentic. Although Bale tried to convince Ledger that the scene would look just as real if they faked the fighting, Ledger insisted that Bale didn't pull any punches and even tried to provoke him to hit harder. Oh, there's only minutes left. You're gonna have to play my little game if you want to save one of them. Bale himself went into more detail about the scene during an interview that was published in the book 100 Things Batman Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die by Joseph McCabe. The actor said, He was kinda egging me on. I was saying, you know what? I really don't need to actually hit you. It's going to look just as good if I don't. And he's going, go on, go on, go on. He was slamming himself around, and there were tiled walls inside of that set which were cracked and dented from him hurling himself into them. His commitment was total. Despite Bale's attempts to convince his co-star that faking the fight would still look just as realistic, Ledger was determined to have it be as authentic as possible. Few actors are so committed to their roles that they would happily crack tiles by throwing themselves into walls. Christopher and Jonathan Nolan may have developed the Dark Knight's Joker, but Heath Ledger alone gave birth to some of the character's most iconic moments through improvisation. One of the most notable examples of Ledger's contributions came during a scene in Gotham Lockup, when he mockingly applauds after Gordon gets promoted. Even though the clapping was not originally written in the film's script, Nolan loved Ledger's sarcastic clap so much that he ended up including it. There were also rumors that Ledger changed the hospital destruction scene, improvising moments when Joker looks confused and fiddles with a detonator before the explosion follows a few moments later. However, the story has had some holes poked through it, suggesting that the scene may have been scripted. This sudden talent for improvisation was a surprise coming from Ledger, as he had never been known to improvise scenes before. In fact, director Ang Lee recounted Ledger becoming upset when his Brokeback Mountain co-star Jake Gyllenhaal tried going off script, saying, Heath just got really upset, really upset, like his whole progress was disrupted. Jake is more of an improv actor, try this, try that, but Heath's preparation was really deep. Despite the fact that Heath Ledger had never read a Batman comic before he began preparing for his role, he quickly fell in love with the character of the Joker. He considered the Joker to be an instant favorite in his career, and co-star Christian Bale recalled Ledger telling him that it was the most fun he'd ever had with the character. Bale went on to corroborate how much Ledger enjoyed shooting The Dark Knight after rumors of depression surrounded the young actor's death, telling reporters, I saw him as having nothing but the best time playing the Joker. At the end of the day, he was having a wonderful time making this movie. I 
I say he couldn't have been happier doing it. Ledger's own sister Kate stepped into the spotlight to dismiss rumors that his overdose was intentional, and even revealed that Ledger had already been planning to return as Joker. She said, He was so proud of what he had done in The Dark Knight, and I know he had plans for another Batman. He loved working with Chris Nolan and Christian Bale and Gary Oldman. He just had the best time ever doing that film. Heath Ledger broke down quite a few boundaries with his Joker performance in The Dark Knight when awards season rolled around. Most superhero films, despite constantly topping box office sales, are rarely considered by the Academy. However, Ledger's turn as a Joker brought quite a bit of attention to this previously overlooked genre, and earned him a multitude of honors, including a Golden Globe, British BAFTA, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Making great strides for superhero films wasn't the only way Ledger's posthumous awards changed his legacy. He became one of only two actors to win an Oscar after death. Before him, Peter Finch had won for his work in the 1976 satirical film Network after passing from a heart attack. Ledger had been nominated for Best Actor for his role in Brokeback Mountain back in 2006, but never got to see a win. His father, Kim, accepted the award for The Dark Knight on his behalf with a beautiful statement on Heath's legacy. This award tonight would have humbly validated Heath's quiet determination to be truly accepted by you all here, his peers, in an industry that he so loved. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.